So the saying is that you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. And so I think in the beginning, a lot of people, it's sort of phase one of all of this idea is that people stop themselves from the, at the outset because they don't ever think they could be great. So let's define what great means. For you personally, what does it actually mean? Does great mean relative to a world champion? I don't think that's the right way to look at it. I think you're going to be on a very slippery slope of like sadness if you compare yourself against all time legends of dancing. I don't think that's the way to approach it. So does great mean compared to like the mechanic down the road who dances on a pub table on a Friday night after he's had too many woohoos, right? I don't think that's a good comparison either. So if we're not comparing ourselves to someone else, right, and we're not measuring up against a, a different extrinsic uh, level, what is great then? What does it mean to actually you? Personally, the way I view life, and something that I've learned through my own trials and tribulations is to not really look over where the grass is greener, so to speak, because it isn't until you realize you need to weed that soil, till that soil, mow it, like edge it. You've got to look after it, right? It's too much, actually. Often we covet what other people have. We look at their skills as a dancer. We look at the ability of that person to lead and that lady to follow versus our own skill. We look at how well they do at a competition, how effortless, right? God damn, how effortless, right? How easy do some people make dancing look? I don't know about you, but I used to be like, oh my God, like how easy do they make dancing look? And then I would be like, how do I make dancing look so hard, right? And so comparing yourself against that, not very fair, is it? Now, I do believe comparison is important to one extent. I think it's important that you compare yourself uh, to an extent to maybe someone who's a little bit better than you to realize what's possible because they all started. Look, another thing to think about, all champions were beginners, right? All champions started at the bottom and then they worked their way to the top and they stuck at it. Why? What allowed them to become great? What really changed for them? What's something that you and I can do that could help us get to that space as well? Well, if we come back to the fact that we look at comparing potentially against somebody who's a little bit better than us, but we use it in a way that helps us rather than is detrimental. You see, it's detrimental comparing yourself against an all-time great because it's unfair. It's like saying you're going to go into business and be the next Apple. Look, maybe, but the probability is no, right? Like too much had to line up for that to happen. It's, it's, it's a unicorn. It's not even a unicorn, man. There's a term called a phoenix, right? A phoenix is different. See, a unicorn's a billion dollar company. A phoenix is a one in like a billion. You know, they're, they're the companies that last a hundred years. Um, they're, they they're, they're Seven out of every million companies become a, a phoenix. So phoenix rises from the ashes. But the reason I love the idea of a phoenix rising from the ashes is because that represents what great means. You see, great really can represent for you this. You give birth to yourself every time that you dance, meaning that the labor pains you have to go through, if you were to look at it that way, the death and the rebirth is exactly what happens when you look at becoming a better version of yourself tomorrow and today than you were yesterday. Now, as straightforward as that may appear, that's particularly to me what makes somebody great. Now, somebody good is a different measure, I believe. I don't believe they're trying to be the next best version of themselves every day. They're not striving to create a better version of who they were, um, to learn from failures and past mistakes as lessons and as navigation tools. Uh, rather than as reasons to not do things. So I think somebody who's good in life is, is, is playing it safe, right? They're playing it very safe. They're trying to do the minimum to get by. They're in a secure position in a job. They're not really trying to challenge themselves. And they're nice to people. They, they walk the lady, you know, the grandma down the street. They say hello to the barista. Oh, but no, no, they will not high five the barista. <laughs> no, no, this person, they only do a good thing. They, they do, they say hello and they keep their space, right? They don't, they don't high five. A great person would high five and a good person, well, they would just be mediocre. My brother posted a funny meme the other day. It was like a, the quote said in, in a big card, uh, good enough, mediocrities. <laughs> I had a picture of a Greek statue, although it's fantastic, right? So we don't want to just be good, right? You know what, who the fuck, I mean, come on, who wants to be a good dancer? Think about that for a sec. What's your, what do you want to be with your dancer? Uh, like I just, I want to be a poor dancer. I want to be a good dancer. Nobody wants to be a poor dancer or a good dancer. They want to be a great dancer. 
but great is relative to you. And most importantly, it's relative to the person you were yesterday and the year before and the year before that. It's one of the reasons why I love metal tests. I love metal tests. I love competitions. I love the, the, the videos that I do because they stretch. You know, creating an online course is difficult work because it stretches me as a teacher to be better for you. It makes me level up. And I think that's what makes somebody great. It doesn't matter about the accolades. It actually doesn't matter about the fact you win or don't win a competition. It doesn't really matter about having a trophy or not. I mean, yeah, look, those accomplishments are good. It's extrinsic reinforcement that you're on the right track to an extent, but it's not the end or be all, right? Because we're trying to become great dancers. Now, there's another thing here now that we've defined what great can mean. And again, that's relative to you because how do you measure up your own greatness? Because I believe you can be, for sure. I've seen it. I've seen it enough to play out to know it's true. I've had people come in who have had disabilities become great dancers. I've had uh, people who have started dancing in their late 60s go on to win a world championship okay, within a few years and become great for themselves. Now, would they ever win against an amateur at, in, who's 20? No, but that's, that's, that's not how we measure this stuff, right? And so I've seen people who come in with two left feet, pigeon-toed and overweight, not really doing much with their life, focus in, dial in, lose weight, straighten up their feet, get good posture and crush it in every mental exam. That's greatness, right? It's greatness being realized. So now we've defined it. The next thing we've got to think about is like, okay, how do we actually matriculate that? Like, how do we manifest greatness? What do you think? You tell me. What does that even look like to you? Have you ever thought about that as a question? Because mo again, like I said in the beginning, most people don't. They look at like the best and they go, oh shit, I can never be that. So they don't even try to do anything different. All right, so we're not that category of people because those are like good people. You know, they just stop themselves dead in the track. So you're pursuing this, you're going for it. Well, how do you manifest it? Okay, so now you might say, let's look at strategy. Potentially you need more lessons, maybe you need more group classes, maybe you need more practice. I mean, everyone's like, oh my God, I need to practice more. I mean, okay, for sure. But let's say you practice five days a week. I mean, let's say you do that. Does that actually mean that you'd be better? Not necessarily. I've seen people stagnate, right? I've seen people stay the same when they dance. I've seen them not really improve a huge amount, which can be quite shocking if you think about it. It's like, how can you continually do something and not be better? Ah, well, that's what greatness is, right? That's what greatness means is we're uncovering how to do that. How do we actually get to being greater and being uh, better within ourselves every day? Because you don't just turn up and that happens. I'll give you an example. When I have people come into a practice session, I watch everyone. Like I watch everyone come in. I watch everyone on the floor and I watch everyone. And when they, I know what time everyone leaves. And I don't do this because, because I don't need to bring it up. I don't need to say to them, you only did 40 minutes. You only did an hour, right? You were there for two hours, but you danced for 10 minutes. Like, no, but it's, it's my study, an observation of why the results will play out for some people and they won't for others. I mean, it's their life. It's the way they want to dance. It's up to them how, how they want. But the problem is they can't complain if they don't get the results they want, right? So if you want to be great, you have to start looking at how you use your time really wisely, right? Like really smartly. And I think part of this, and I'm going to give you the answer here that I feel is, is true, and it's from my own experience and what I've seen play out with many people, is there is a, a specific way that you use your time and that you use your body in dancing that manifests results rapidly, but also over the long period of time. So, it, because look, you can hit, you can make your dancing better with really intense periods of practice, but then it drops off. And so that's not a really good strategy, right? So going intense for two weeks before a medal, yeah, you'll get better. And then what, for the next 10 months, you, you just coast. So you're only ever getting better really in, a in the lesson you're doing, that's, that's a good lesson. And then of course, in the time that you are intensely practicing leading up to a medal. So after a lot of research and a lot of umming and ahhing and watching and observing my students and seeing what worked for me when I failed, when I didn't do very well, when I just couldn't be bothered. I mean, look, I'm not perfect. I've got to tell you, being a professional dancer sort of sucks. Like you think it's awesome. It's actually the most grueling thing in the world. I, I wouldn't really wish it upon most people. <laughs> it's like, I want to be professional. Why? <laughs> like, why do you want to do that to yourself? You know, it's terrible. But like, you know, there are great rewards, obviously. Like one of the things with good skills is once you develop the skill, it doesn't go away. 
But um, to get that skill, my God, you've got to give a lot up. So being great's good because being professional, like that, you know, that's that's it's something a little bit more than just being great. You have to be really, really outstanding, you know, and that's hard to maintain. It's very hard to maintain a level like that. And so when we're when we're looking at this, we go, okay, so what do I actually have to do? What's the thing that will really help me uh, a lot? And I'm just going to put a little pin there for a second and say, look, what you've got to do. As I have a sip for my drink, one second. Mm -mm. A bit of black coffee helps the soul. You got to think about for yourself your own strategy and how your body reacts with a certain level of training, a certain amount of training, a certain amount of things. But there is a, a psychological move that you have to have, and this is called incremental. Write this word down: incremental. Now, this is for sure the stepping stones between poor performance, good performance great performance, outstanding performance, world-class performance, okay? So, and, and, and age can spread across all of those because age can dip down into any one of those categories. So age doesn't mean you can be world-class, right? What I mean by that is you don't need to be just 20 years old to dance world-class because 20-year-olds can dance poorly, right? 80-year-olds can dance world-class and they can also dance poor. So it is the word incremental that I want you to burn up into your psyche. Because you could say, yeah, this is all about growth. Uh, it's about the way I do things, sure. But incremental is actually a scientifically proven methodology that Olympic champions, Tour de France, uh, bicycle teams that win, win, not lose, win, use. Because what they found was uh, over a long period of like examining, oh my God, like, we're a losing team. How do we become a winning team? Trying all the different deep heats, trying all the different um, natural ways, not the anabolic ways, no steroids, uh, no human growth hormones, I hope, uh, to help improve performance, sleep, water, all the different possibilities you could possibly think of to make a Tour de France team win. What did they do to, to become better? Well, uh, a coach had that exact question and he was like, well, it turns out incremental improvement. You see, if they went for a 1% improvement every time they got on the bike, they would win the Tour de France. And it seems so hard to understand this concept because you might nod and go, oh, that's obvious, is it? Because when you apply it, that's where I guess the bike tires meet the road because it's in that incremental improvement that we get the biggest gains. It's really hard to understand, but let's look at it from a compound point of view. So compound interest in, a, in an investment works the same way. So if you haven't heard this idea before, think about it like this. If you took $2,000 a month and you invested it in a compound account, uh, meaning that the interest on that $2,000 a month gave you a 10% return every year on that money, over a period of 20 years, you'd have $1.5 million. And all you've ever done is put in two grand a month, right? Actually, probably more than that at two grand a month. And so it'd be about $34 million over 50 years. And you think, God, I've only put $2,000 in every month. Yeah, but that's what interest does, it compounds. So in the first year, you'd only have what, 24 grand? Second year, 48 grand? Well, it wouldn't be 48 because you'd have 10% on both years, right? So you're already getting interest. So the point is this, it's very hard for us to understand that. Anyone can become a millionaire by putting in $2,000 a month. You do 1,000 a month, you're still gonna be a millionaire over time, right? But you haven't earned a million dollars by working, it's because of the compound interest. It's really hard to understand. It's so hard to grasp. And I really think it's one of the reasons why people don't invest more incrementally based training into their practice. Because I think at the outset, they think I can never be great. And I think at the outset, they think it's going to take too much work. And yeah, it's, it is. It's like, it, like I said, if you want to become a professional, that's a different level of incremental training. But I'm just talking about being great here for yourself. And so if you look at the time you do practice in and you think, okay, I buy into this idea of incremental training. What do I actually have to do? Ah, well, this is where it becomes a bit challenging because it depends on your level of dancing. So if you're a beginner dancer, just being great would be closing your feet like every time you dance, you know, like get your feet to close and be in time with the music. And that can apply to everyone, right? Okay, but if you've been dancing a while and you're, let's say, a mid-level competitor, you're gonna have different problems. You can close your feet, you know your steps, but you know, how strong, your, how strong is your leg action? You're dancing cha-cha on bent legs. Are you dancing cha-cha 
uh, on uh, with with the wrong type of hip action or no hip action. Like, are you using your upper body rhythm properly? Are you starting to develop that side of things? Okay, so you've got to figure out what that one percent is for you. But I remember Stephen Kotler sending to me a uh, an email. He's one of the world's leading researchers into what's called flow, the flow states. You know, have you ever had a moment where you have been in the zone? You could be training, you could be running. It's very much known for athletes to be in the zone where it's like everything fades out and you just get into this trance. And it's been well recorded with uh, artists. I think Rembrandt, he went for like three days painting. No food, didn't go to the toilet for like a day, didn't, didn't move, painted, 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 painted. Why? He was in the flow state. And we don't know how to, inc- this is what the research is, they don't know how to make these flow states occur but along the discovery of how to create these flow states, which are the highest level of like consciousness, so like the highest level of us as human beings to create and to draw from within all of our intuitions and our, um, our juices and our imagination, the craziest thing was like they discovered performance is improved massively and compounded over time with incremental improvement, but at a level of 4%. Right, so if you can get up to win four percent out of what you do versus one percent, you're going to find a huge shift. But the starting point is: Do you believe you can be great? And if the answer is yes, and you say I can, then you need to think about it from a strategic point of view. How do I then apply that? Okay, you go into the studio and you you measure for yourself what your top level of dancing would feel like. You know, so you can you can measure in a sense of do two minutes of a waltz. Can you even last two minutes? If you can do only one minute, then you know 1% of one minute is six more sec is what 10, 10% is. So it'd be an extra second really. So if you could do, if you could measure it that way, so go an extra four seconds, right? Um, if you wanted to look at it from a time point of view, if you wanted to look at it from a dancing perspective, think 1% would be if your frame was like this, when you would go to do boring dancing and by the minute time, your arms are here, a 1% improvement would be just holding your arms out a little bit more for that time. That's it, okay? It's not, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you do that like every time, one to 4% range, every time you dance, you are gonna improve. Now here's where I have to be a coach for a second. I really think that you need to level up how much you practice and train. And people, people don't like hearing that, so I'm not gonna tell you to do it because motivation doesn't come from me telling you that, it comes from within. If you're passionate about dancing, like truly passionate, you should be pissed off that you don't practice enough, right? You should, you should be bothered. If you're truly interested in improving, and I believe you are if you're listening to this, you would be annoyed that you're not dancing enough. Now, don't go blaming your partner and don't go blaming other people. Don't blame anything but yourself for not doing more of it because that's really important. You, you, as a creator, you should be bothered you're not creating. Like, okay, so a musician who's, who dabbles in music is not really a musician. They're a hobbyist, right? So if you're a hobbyist dancer, it's a bit of a different story. If you're serious about your dancing and you want to improve, this is the message for you because you would be bothered that you're not dancing enough. If you feel you're dancing enough at your current level, then what I'm saying is probably not going to work for you. Becoming great, like a better version of yourself on the floor, yes, every week, that's what you're aiming for. But your results going to be so drawn out, it's, it, it's, it's going to be harder for you to, to really feel great dancing coming about. So the answer would be to dance stronger, harder, and longer. But not everybody should do that. Not everybody needs to do that. Okay. So there's a, there's, it sounds contradictory, but there's a very hard line for me to draw for people because you've got to do it for yourself. But I'm giving you some tools to measure. If you truly want to be great at your dancing and passion burns within you to dance, you would be bothered you're not dancing enough. That's just how it is with all the dancers I've ever met who became, you know, outstanding. They become top in their field. They become representatives in the country. They became champions in their state. They uh, became teachers, right? They become top medalists, whatever whatever that looks like. There is something within them that yearns for more, but not everyone can dance six days a week and not everyone should, because that can also have the opposite effect and kill your passion, right? So you're gonna find that, that level. But what I do encourage for you, my, my message for you today is to find that one to 4% level every single time you dance. 
I don't care if you're on the floor. I don't care if you're naked and you've just woken up out of your bedroom and you're like, boom, chicka, boom, good morning world. Time to dance. Make sure the curtains are closed, right? One to four percent. When you're in the lesson, one to four percent. And imagine it into this detail. One to four percent better with your hand action. One to four percent better with your hip action. One to four percent better with your leg action. One to four percent better with your footwork. One to four percent better interpretation of music. One to four percent better partnering skills. Like a map now, now you can see where the game can get changed. Now, just like compound interest over time, that's going to add up. You're going to become a you're going to become a weapon. There's no doubt in my mind you will become incredible um, in your own self. And to me, I haven't seen it play out any other way. I would discourage you from trying to use this message to go in and be too intense when you come back into the studio. Drip feed it, baby. Drip feed it. One of the challenges I see for dancers who come into my studio is um, is is, in is is poor commitment. So they, they commit to a, a, a two days of training and they only turn up to one, or they commit to they commit to a weekly lesson and they show up to three out of the four, or they commit to a weekly training they, com they show up to two out of the four or to five out of the six. Right? Either way, they they don't make up for it. Okay, and so because of that, you you sort of you're going to trap yourself into thinking you're going to get better, but you won't, and you'll be frustrated over the long term. And I don't want you to be frustrated. I actually want you to win. Like I want you to succeed. But unfortunately, we can't bullshit ourselves and think, well, you know, I'll get better just if I turn up occasionally. It's like, no, man. But that's okay if you don't want to. Stay in the game. If you want to dance and just have fun and you're not interested in improvement, that's actually okay as well. Um, but it's when you want to tip over into the world of being great and your best version of yourself the demands are different. 